Hi everyone and welcome. A few of you have been asking for this tutorial, so here it is. We'll go through the Geonode setup for my Waking Marigolds animation. I'd like to thank Crossmind Studio and his tutorials that really, really helped me figure this out, so thank you very much. First of all, set up the view for the geometry nodes, hide the camera, and of course delete the default cube because one shall always delete the default cube. I then import an FBX of a human figure because that's what I'm going to use, but you can use any type of geometry you like as long as you have enough faces and vertices really to work with. So here it is. It's a simple human figure. We don't need anything fancy really as we will not be animating it. We will only use the shape of it to arrange other geometry, so the stalks and the flowers on top of it. So as it will remain idle, I just tend to go into this little menu up there and just hide the bones. Then select it so it's light orange and then go into geometry nodes, hit new and let's dive in. So what we want now is to instance geometry on this human shape and for that we will need three important nodes. The first one is distribute points to faces and it does exactly that, it distributes points to the faces of the human geometry and the shape turned as you can see into a swarm of little points and the second one is instance on points and this one will allow us to input the geometry we'll put on those points we just distributed and it all disappears and that's normal as now we have to figure out what geometry we want to repeat on those points and what we want is something that can help us make a stalk, so we're going to use curve line and tap it into instance. And you can see that it all comes back now, and if you zoom in, you can see that all those little points were replaced by lines. And that's pretty cool. So that's the basics here, and we will be repeating this in the next steps with a few additional nodes to help us control better the behavior of these instances. And I suggest that you lower the density of the points as the flowers will be quite bigger and we want the whole to be intelligible enough and not a big mess of geometries that blend into one another. And you can also play with the seed, but this parameter really will not impact our animation. So next, we want to add a bit of randomness and craziness to our human field of curve lines. And for that, I use Musgrave Texture and connect it to Rotation on the Instance and Points node. And you can play with the different parameters of the texture and you can see the curves move. But I usually just tend to leave the default values. Um, so here it was 5. And now I just need to... Uh, Tidy up a little bit the nodes to make some room uh, for all the new connections. Because what we will do now is just actually give a bit more control and more accurate arrangement to the curves. And to do that, um, I use the normals of the geometry and feed it into the vector input of the Musgrave texture to give it really a more accurate arrangement of curves. To actually make it more accurate, we need to use another node, uh, which is called Align Euler to Vector. And that node, we will actually just connect it in between, uh, between the normal and the vector. And you can just uh, put it on the z-axis here so they're kind of all pointing outwards. And of course, connect it to vector and not to rotation. So at the moment, the way the curves displayed is that they are not animated at all. But actually, we can animate it via the Musgrave Texture node. And if you go into the drop-down menu, you just need to select 4D and this new parameter shows up, and if we scrub it, it animates the curves. So what we can do here to make an ongoing animation without having to keyframe the texture parameters is to call in the scene time node, 
and connect seconds to the W parameter of the texture. And when we hit play, the curves are moving as the scene time node is feeding actually the seconds values into the W parameter. So if you zoom in, you can see that they move a bit too fast and we want to set up a more relaxing scene. So a smoother oscillation and movement and slower even, and that can be solved with the help of the math node. Uh, you just need to tap it in between the scene time and the Musgrave texture and then uh, just divide the values and keep dividing until you find your sweet spot and even duplicate it, add another math node if needed and because the beauty of geometry nodes is that it's not a destructive process, you can always go back, adjust the values and fine tune the parameters until you find that uh, it works for you. So here this works fine for me, it's quite relaxing and it's not too crazy yet, it has that little randomness. So we will move to the next bit. So now we want to finalize the stalks before we move to the flowers and for that we go to the end of the node tree as the nodes will be invoking and connecting will come after the instance and points and before the output. And the first one is realize instances and this makes them all individual entities and the second one that we'll be looking into is curve to mesh. So we turn those instances into actual meshes. And we need to give those meshes a profile as well. So you just go Shift A and search for Curve Circle. And this Curve Circle node, we will connect it to uh, the profile curve. And as you can see, it all goes crazy as the radius is way too big. So you can just lower the resolution to something like 8 and set the radius to 0 0.1 for now. So we can see that it all changed and let's see what it looks like up close. And we see now that the lines turned into tubes, which is quite cool. So what we want actually next is to change still that shape of those uh, stalks and we want them to be really pointy at their base and wider on top where the flower will come and uh, for that uh, we need to add another node which is set curve radius and we put it between the realized instances and the curve to mesh and we need another node which is the endpoint selection node and you just uh, tap it into uh, the set curve radius and set the start size to zero and leave end size to one. And now it all seems to have disappeared and I wonder why... Oh yeah, it's still here but it's really really tiny and that's actually because I made a mistake and connected uh, endpoint selection into selection but it should actually go into radius because we want the radius to be affected by the endpoint selection node and the size of it is managed by the curve circle radius parameter. So now everything's fine. So now we have all these little cone shaped stalks. They're still a bit too wide to my liking so I'll just reduce the radius to half uh, the value so or even more depending on what you prefer but I put it here to 0 0.05 and now to me it looks much much better so now we're actually done with the stalks and we will just add one last node at the very end uh, and we will use this node towards the end as well and that node is the set material node uh, for shading our stalks So here we go. And next 
we'll be instancing flowers on the stalks we've just created but before we continue uh, we need to tidy up a little bit so we don't end up entangled into different connections between nodes etc or disconnecting nodes by mistake so um, you can click on the little arrow and collapse the nodes you know you won't be touching again it saves room and it's quite tidy so this is it here we are and now we can start with the flowers but first we're going to add a join geometry node to be able to show all the different geometries we want to render in the output then we want to reproduce the instancing so this time on the stalks to do that you need to add instance on points again and connect the stalks to points so let's do that you need to use mesh from the curve to mesh node and tap it into the points of the instance on points node and also don't forget to connect the instance on points to the joint geometry and now we need a flower to instance and for that we will add a node we haven't used yet and that node will allow us to invoke geometry we have in our project that is not yet part of this geometry nodes tree and this node is called object info so let's search for it add it and now connect the object info geometry into instance of the instance and points node and this place here with the eyedropper will contain our flower so I have a flower ready in FBX format and I'm just going to import it it takes a little while and here it is so let's have a look as I can see it's elegantly named cube so I'm going to rename it flower here we go and now it's quite a big and dense mesh we can see it's got quite a lot of vertices and this can get quite heavy as we will be instancing on each stalk and to make it lighter to work with I will decimate the mesh to reduce its density so go to modifiers the little wrench menu and click on add modifier decimate unsubdivide and click away to reduce the density of the mesh so six steps in my case seem to work well but it can be more or less for you if any to see what works best for you so let's go back to six and just don't forget to apply the modifier once you're happy with it and we can now see that the mesh is not as dense as previously and it'll be much lighter to compute Next, let's add the flower to the geometry nodes tree. Click on the eyedropper and then on the flower to invoke it. It takes a little time for my computer to work uh, all the geometry and uh, we see then that the human shape changed a little. And my computer is starting seriously to lag. But if we zoom in, actually, we can see now that each stalk has a flower now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to unselect it and then go back to the flower and really just uh, size it down so it really is in proportion to the human shape. And one thing that I always forget is that I forget to apply the transforms with Control A so uh, really do that so it doesn't mess up the geometry node setup sometimes some instances are offset or look different because we forget to apply the transforms so I just resize it and then hit Control A to apply transforms and then I'm just uh, going to hide it because we don't really need to see it and then just reinvoke it again here and let's see what happens so here we are we have tiny flowers and stalks maybe what we need to do is to reduce the density of the points even further on our human shaped mesh 
so we have fewer stalks. We want to be able to distinguish the flowers. So I went down to point three in the first distribute points on faces node. And next, when we add a line Euler to vector node, something weird happens. If we look closer, the flowers are offset from the stalks. And to fix that, we need to reset the origin of the flower object. So what you're going to do is go back and unhide it, then find it in your viewport, select it, and then right click, set origin to origin to geometry. So we select it and then right click, set origin to geometry. And now if we go back to the human shape and look again, the flowers sit right on top of the stalks where we really want them to be. So all is looking good to me now and we can go back and hide the flower object by clicking on the little eye to hide from viewport and on the camera to ignore it when we render the animation. So next we want to add a bit more control to our flower. So with the align Euler to vector node we connect it into the rotation of the instance on points node that is instancing our flower and then we add two other nodes that we will connect to the align Euler to vector node. The normal we connect to the vector input and then a map range node we connect to the rotation. So here it is and we will connect that one to rotation. And then we will add a second map range node and this time we will connect it to the scale input of the instance and points node. What we are trying to achieve here is to be able to control the rotation and the size of the flowers. Later we will connect other nodes into these two map range nodes and feed values into those two nodes that will affect the rotation and size of our flowers. I just need to rearrange the nodes a little bit here. As you can see my computer is lagging quite a bit now because it is computing all the added geometry of the flowers. And it's quite painful to watch, but actually there is quite a quick fix to that. What you can do is just uh, disconnect the object info of the flower from the instance and points node, because we don't need it connected at the moment and we can just go back to it and reconnect whenever we need to double check how it all works. And now you can see everything is fluid again. And next we will create the geometry that the flowers and stalks will be interacting with. So we will just redo the same steps. In the viewport just use Shift A and then Mesh Icosphere. I'm going to resize it so it is also in proportion to a human shaped meadow of marigolds. And uh, just give it an explicit name as well. Um, I'm calling it Orb uh, here. And what this object will do is that its proximity will affect the size and rotation of the flowers. So move it a bit closer to your flowers and then uh, in the geometry nodes we will be adding again uh, the same nodes we've seen so far. So the object info node just like we did with the flower and we will select the object with the eyedropper to invoke it. So we position it a bit closer to our flowers so we can see what's happening. Uh, when we start actually uh, inputting the values. And uh, once we've invoked it into the geometry nodes tree, we will use it to make the flowers responsive to its proximity. And for that, we will use a different node we haven't seen so far is the geometry proximity node. And we will connect the object info node to target. And of course, don't forget to set it to relative. So next we will connect the geometry proximity to the stalks and flowers. So the stalks first, we want the proximity to affect the scale. So use the distance output and connect it to scale. And it all goes crazy. As you can see, if you move the icosphere, the scale of the stalks goes up or down. And as satisfying as this may be, we want less craziness actually, and we would like to control it a bit better. So 
Go back to the geometry nodes, as we will be adding extra nodes between the geometry proximity and the scale input of the instance on points node. So we need a bit of room for those intermediary nodes. So select them, move them around, and once you have enough room, um, hit Shift-A and uh, add a map range node and plug it between the proximity node and the instance and points node. And the values are reset now and we can now control better how the stalks are supposed to react. So now it's just a matter of scrubbing through these values and uh, finding something that works for you. Uh, the values I ended up with here are not at all the same as in the original project. So here it's really down to your own appreciation and finding out what works for your setup. So just uh, go through these values and uh, find something that works. You can always go back and fine tune it. And to add extra control, we can add the color ramp and put it between the map range node and the instance and points node and reverse the color values so that the stalks are tiny when they're far away and grow when they're near the icosphere. And move the icosphere nearer maybe and zoom in if needed to better see the interactions because sometimes they're very faint depending on the values you've inputted. Add math nodes as well if needed to fine tune. Um, for example here um, I'll be using a math node and the multiply uh, but you can actually add as many math nodes as you want to actually uh, control the reaction and see really what works best for you. And you can see now here that only the stalks that grow are those that are really near the sphere. Here it all went crazy again. So select the orb and move it around to get a sense of how the stalks are reacting and then go back to the nodes and fine tune the parameters. Um, so uh, for example here you can see that it's really limited how they're reacting in terms of range. Um, but yeah, it's still a bit too much, so I'll be adding uh, actually an extra math node. And once I've done that, and set a value that kind of works, um, I went back to the map range node and changed the parameters as well. Um, so it's really about fine-tuning the distance interaction if needed and I find that this part is the one that is the most time-consuming as you need to find that sweet spot that works for your animation. So once you've fine-tuned uh, these parameters that work for you, uh, next what we will do is we will connect the distance of the geometry proximity to the flowers so they can rotate and grow as well when they are closer to the icosphere. So now we're going to connect the geometry proximity node to the flowers to control the rotation and scale of our flowers. But first we'll add the icosphere to the join geometry node and then we'll reorganize the nodes a little bit. Uh, if you've collapsed the flowers map range nodes, deploy them again as we'll be using them for rotation and scale of the flowers and it's really much much easier to see which inputs and outputs we're using when they're fully open. Reorganize the nodes as some may get in the way and at the end of this video you'll find the whole setup organized in frames and up close so if by mistake you've disconnected some nodes you can just screenshot the end frames of this video to have the whole setup in detail. And so you can see here I'm struggling to find a place for the flowers object info node so it doesn't get in the way. Anyway, you can organize them as you like as long as you keep the connections intact. Here I'm not connecting it again to instances as not to slow down my computer. So now really uh, we're nearly towards the end as it's just a matter of connecting the distance output of the geometry proximity node to the values of both map range nodes, the ones that uh, are connected to the flowers. So this one we're going to collapse it and uh, we will just use the distance output and into the value of the first map range node and then 
the same again from the distance into the value of the second map range node. So make sure it's in the value and that it's coming from distance. What you can do uh, is use a shift right mouse button to actually create this little uh, connection node so that uh, it helps you with the, the whole organizing the nodes neatly. And now uh, we can connect the flowers again to see if it worked and uh, to fine tune the map range values. So go to the map range nodes and start scrubbing till you find what works best for you. Remember, one map range node is for rotation and the other one is for scale. And uh, I like smooth step, so I tend to use that in the map range nodes. But you might prefer something else. And uh, this looks like it works well for now. So I'll leave it at this. So let's have a closer look at the flowers and let's zoom in a bit. Um, here we go, that's a bit too much, there you go. Um, this looks pretty cool to me, so I'll leave it at this and uh, we can now just set the rotation as well. It's really up to your own personal preference, just experiment and see what works for you as you may be instancing different types of flowers uh, or different kind of geometry. So now we can finalize it all by adding the set material nodes for shading. So we already have one for the stalks, so we just need a last one for the orb, as my imported flower already came with a material, but you may want to set up a material for your flower as well if it doesn't have one. So go to the material tab and create new materials, uh, rename them accordingly. Uh, here I'm just... Uh, going to unplug the flowers uh, because my computer is lagging and uh, so yeah rename the materials so you know what they're supposed to shade and then assign them to their respective objects otherwise you won't be able to see the effect of the shader on the object so we have the orb and the stalks and then uh, switch to shading view and set up the materials. But first you want to choose your render engine accordingly. I went for cycles here. So I used uh, very simple materials, but feel free to go crazy here. Uh, so for the stalks, I used a glass shader with a green color, a really light green hue. And uh, for the orb, I also used the glass shader, but with a full red color, so it really looks like a big gem, like a big ruby. So feel free to play with it, experiment. This is basically how we all learn uh, with all the different possibilities. And then once you're happy, go back to the geometry nodes. And in my case, reconnect the flowers and have a look up close. And I'm really happy with the result. It looks really nice. There are a few other things you can do. Um, I went back to the shader menu and I set the world shader to black. And then I really played with the lights um, because at some stage, I don't know if you remember, um, the orb is illuminating the flowers. And uh, for that, you need to use a spotlight and place it really near and in front of the orb and parent it to the orb. And remember the good rules of parenting, a child always follows the parents. So remember to select the parent last. So when you animate the orb, it moves upwards and towards the flowers and the light just follows. And here's the whole setup, organized in frames for your reference. I really hope uh, you enjoyed this tutorial and many, many thanks for watching. Uh, many thanks again to Crossmind Studio for his tutorials and uh, geometry nodes. It was really helpful. 
and I'd appreciate if you like this video and really don't hesitate to share and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you next time.